different, all the different uh, rhythm, not rhythm, but the different tonal scale. Mm -hmm. This is their quinto, and this would be our bass. Mm -hmm. So when you change it, it makes it. So I would have to be left handed to do it right. You know, the guy is. Digging. Right. But the tablas is not like built like a bongo. No, it's a totally different uh -huh. setup. I, I, I know that the uh, the tonal scale is different, so I can't do that. Mm -hmm. But I was, I'm curious about. He never runs with the uh, mm -hmm. the bass drum. Uh -huh. It's usually with the right hand. Oh, okay. But his right hand is my left hand. Mm -hmm. And when we go to the right hand, you go to two hands. since I'm filming you. Excuse me? I said, I guess we should get to the reading since I'm filming you. <laughs> you know, people are going to think we planned this after a while. But, uh, <laughs> I, just but I, can say, I can tell you this. Mm -hmm. Today is uh, September 29th. Yes, it is. And uh, I'm going to pull this chair over here. First and preach for about two minutes. All right. Preach on. Mm. Amen and all that. Mm -hmm. Ashe. Amen and Ashe and all that. Mm -hmm. One of the things I'm going to say, <coughs> because we've been doing this continuous uh, collaboration mm -hmm. about this piece, about the reading of uh, The Snake Doctor. Yes. I'm on chapter 21, I believe. I 22. Believe, well, chapter 21. 22. 22? Yes, indeed. Yes, of course. We are on chapter 22. Yes. No, chapter 23. Oh, yeah, you read 21 and 22. Yeah. yeah, so we're on chapter 23. Yeah, okay, I stand corrected. Hey, hey, mm -hmm. I'm keeping track because I got a mark in between that. Uh -huh. All I can say is uh, as coherent. Mm-hmm. Intelligent, uh, uh, well aware African Americans yes. are joining, I'm sure, millions and millions and millions of other people in our country. It's just we've just seen one of the most coherent, <laughs> the in <laughs> the most, I it's so it's so incoherent, I can't even hardly say it. Yes, we've just witnessed the first debate between the uh, our president and the uh, former vice president, uh, and it was one of the most incoherent performances by a present day president that I could ever remember. And I'm 83 years old. I've seen quite a few various presidents by this time. I'm mm -hmm. not a I'm not a kid trying to be young. Well, That's, no, I mean you said that you remember the mushroom cloud on the newspaper when you uh, were a kid. Yeah, yeah, that was a trip. I mm -hmm. must have been five or something. Mm -hmm. And you know, and they had it on the front page of the Chicago Tribune or something. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'm sure there were incoherent, uh, corrupt, uh, beast monster presidents back then. Mm -hmm. But they didn't come even close to the level. They of honored where the we Constitution. Saw this guy go. Yes, they they did and, have some respect for the Constitution. Okay, I, I'll let some uh, uh, some greater political pundits deal with that. Meanwhile, I'm going on to chapter... Yes, we need something uh, lighthearted 
Well, at least mysterious. At least it's fictional. Fiction, <laughs> yeah. The let's, stuff let's he's get talking a, about is real. Okay, yeah. Let's, it let's, should be fiction. Yes, let's, let's get a bit of fiction, please. And you are reading again well, from, what's the book? This one right here. Please, show me. Show it to me, please. Pull it up so I can see it good. Oh, the Snake Doctor. The Snake Not just Doctor. Just one, but two. Okay. <laughs> How about There's that? only one book of Snake Doctor, but you have the two books of them. Yeah. The two books are there. Okay. All right. Very kindly appreciate that. And so you are reading from chapter, chapter 23 and 24, and so I have to still post 21 and 22. You got it. But here we go. He woke up from a sweaty, soggy nap an hour and a half later, feeling slightly disoriented. Where am I? Oh, we are gone. You slept, sir? Yes, a good sleep. Where are we? She told us not far. You remember, Kofi is going to visit this village oh, yes. that his father visited. 20 some years ago. Mm -hmm. Cheetah is not far. Kofi Young stared out at the people in the field bordering the road. What are they planting here? They're planting grown nuts. Very nice. His mind flickered back to Mr. Sardun Abayati. Poor guy. He may love the peace and quiet of this place, but he must miss his home. His remote, his roots. Exile and repatriation must be one of the hardest things anyone will have to deal with emotionally. Wonder how they would factor into the African American psyche. Chito, mm -hmm. sir. Mm -hmm. 3 p.m., a sluggish time of the day. They drove through a hard, dirt packed main street, a post office, a church a general store, a few open front shops, cinder block houses with corrugated tin roofs, mm. a relatively prosperous looking place. Brother Kwame, how many people do you think live here? Oh, I would say maybe 3,000, maybe 5,000. Mm. 5,000? How do I go about locating somebody in a name Aunt Eugenia in a place with thousands of people? He felt a certain sense of helplessness. <laughs> helplessness. Damn. Brother Kwame, what would huh, where would I go if I wanted to find out where someone was living? To the police, sir, he answered without hesitation. <laughs> I guess so. To the police. <laughs> or to the police. Okay. Yes, of course. The police would know. The police knew where everybody was, and they did know. Oh, Aunt Eugenia, she lives in old Chito. Chito is divided, you see. This is new Chito. She is in old Chito. It is there, just there, about 10 minutes walk down this road. Thank you. Brother Kwame whispered, you should dash him, sir, for the information. Police do not earn much money in the, the small town. How much? Uh, 2000 would be nice. Dollar. Dollar. Mm -hmm. The policeman accepted the dash gratefully and walked him back to the taxi. Auntie Eugenia is a crusty old sort, but she makes very good banku and okra stew. <laughs> old Chiso was thatched. Mud waddle huts, clean and arranged in a circular pattern rather than the straight rows of new she told. Mm. It took only one inquiry of an old woman sweeping her front yard with a bundle of cut twigs to find Aunt Eugenia. She shifted her chewing stick to toothbrush from one side of her mouth to the other and silently pointed at the house, her house, across the road from her. Kofi had the feeling he was approaching a relative he hadn't seen in many years. The woman chopping wood behind her hut turned to face him as he turned the corner of the hut. 
she shaded her eyes from the afternoon sun. Ah, uh, Kojo, my son, you have come back to see your old auntie Eugenia. <laughs> <laughs> no, ma'am, no. I'm not Kojo. I'm little Kofi, Kojo's son. The old lady, he guessed she was 70 or so, dropped her hatchet and walked past him into her hut. Her movements were strong, energetic. A moment later, she emerged from the hut with a tray, two glasses of water, a few nibs of fresh coconut, and two ears of corn. She directed, she directed him to sit on a bench in the shade of the thatched hut. You are welcome. Please sit, sit, sit. <laughs> this is like old times, <laughs> Brother Kwame whispered. Following Brother Kwame's example, Kojo dribbled a few drops of water on the ground before drinking it. Oh, no water. Water from where? Oh, well. Once again, following Brother Kwame's example, he nibbled on the coconut and ate all of the kernels from the fresh, rich-tasting corn cob. Aunt Eugenia pulled a stool up in front of them and watched him as they ate. <laughs> So much. Old people do that. Yes, they do. Yes, mm -hmm. they make sure you eat every drop, I guess. <laughs> See if you like it. What, what about that piece then? <laughs> right. <laughs> you missed the piece. <laughs> the eating finished, she took the tray back inside. Brother Kwame <clears throat> took the opportunity to whisper more cultural advice into Kofi's ear. Sir, here in Chito, your business cannot be done. Quick, quick, you must stay a while. Selena was right on the money. So, I would say if you're going on Thursday and all goes well, then you should be back in Accra on Tuesday or uh, Sunday evening. Aunt Eugenia came out of the hut with a futon draped over her shoulder and a caddy caddy bag of personal items. She strutted across to the house on the other side of the road. She had a short, animated conversation with the woman who had been twig brushing her yard and returned with a bright smile. I will stay in my sister's house while you are here. Come, I will show you where your father slept. Kofi liked her definite way of doing things. The guest's uh, work was gone. Your father slept here. This is where you're going to sleep. Period. <laughs> That's it. No questions. No yeah, ask. Hey, hey. Okay. <laughs> no questions. Do as you're told. <laughs> <laughs> she beckoned for him to follow her into a hut with the hand pulling down the motion he had seen other people use. He came to the entrance of the hut and stared inside. There was order, neatness, everything in its proper place. She hasn't done this because. She was expecting visitors. This is the way she lived. Mm -hmm. Kofi, your father slept here. This is where you would sleep. Okay. Yeah. Uh. The random thoughts about where to find cheap hotels in Chito were immediately kicked to the curb. Look closely, boy. This is where you're going to be while you're up in here. Dig it? Mm -hmm. He stared at the elevated mud sleeping platform, the various woven bags or whatever hanging on the walls of the hut. Nice. It would definitely merit a home beautiful tag mm -hmm. <laughs> if they had enough sense to recognize what good slash utilitarian, utilitarian homes are all about. He could sense that Aunt Eugenia was delighted to see him. Mm -hmm. Felt good about his presence, but it was cool. That was the Cheeto way. Auntie, my friend, this young man from America has questions to ask of you. May I speak more? Kojo stared at Brother Kwame and felt like hugging him. Wow, this dude is really on it. And he was deliberately speaking English to make certain that Kofi understood what he was saying. Auntie Eugenia nodded her head back and forth, indicating that she wasn't sure she wanted to respond to these questions. There was a long pause. This is not America. Things take time here. 
Hmm. Brother, Kwame, Brother Kwame, understanding the protocol, stared at the ground until his elder chose to respond. Aunt Eugenia nodded, yes. Please continue. Auntie, my friend Kofi, the son of Kojo, I knew this one, the old lady interjected. Kojo's son wants to know something. Eh. And there was silence for a few beats. Brother Kwame leaned over and whispered, She will speak to you, but not today, maybe tomorrow. It is late in today now. Kofi felt momentarily at sea. So now what? Kofi, my son, I'm going to prepare your evening meal. Would you like to take a bath before your long journey? Uh, yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> Got me a new one for you, kid. <laughs> what else could I do? <laughs> Brother, <laughs> Brother Kwame shuffled his feet, changing his stance from one foot to the other. He was obviously anxious to leave. Kofi walked to the taxi to retrieve his backpack and to pay the driver. Brother Kwame, I'm a little new at all of this, so what happens now? Well, sir, <clears throat> Auntie will give you a, a very nice chop. You will sleep. And then tomorrow, perhaps, you may begin to ask her of what it is you wish. Okay, I understand that part, but how will I get back to our crowd? I will, I will collect you. When? Oh, let us say Sunday morning. Sunday morning? I haven't planned to stay two days yet. Brother Kwame smiled. Ah, in Ghana here, one must be exercise patience and remain flexible. Mm -hmm. He paid the driver, returned to the hut. Brother Kwame drove away slowly. Aunt Eugenia snatched his backpack and slung it on a stake in the wall of the hut. The water for your bath is there. She pointed to a wooden stall in the in the back area, an outdoor bath. Never had one of those before. I bet. <laughs> <laughs> outdoor bath. Welcome to the village. <laughs> village people. <laughs> he took a hard look around the neighborhood. Most of the huts were within eye range of each other. Over there, a woman was stirring a, a pot of something. A woman sat on a stool, getting her head braided. Four old men sat on the large tree over there, drinking from wooden cups. Hmm. Better palm wine. You have to try something while I'm here. Aunt Eugenia had hung a large towel with the logo Las Vegas on it, <laughs> onto a stake <laughs> at the side of the bathhouse. Mm -hmm. Kofi undressed inside the stall, hung his clothes on the back side, outside, and went inside for his bath. He had to smile at his own feeling. Suddenly, I'm buck naked outdoors. <laughs> Everybody knows I'm in here. The thoughts drove through his mind. Made him smile. Made him giggle. I bet. Wow, this is funny. I wonder how Dad felt when he did this. You know, it's funny. Yeah, because you... I used to do the outdoor bathing uh -huh. in Osu. Mm -hmm. And it was so funny because there were two or three really, really beautiful girls mm -hmm. in, the, in the Osu thing. And they always seem to find a reason to come by. It comes up to here. Right. Okay, I'm not very tall. Uh-huh. So it means that the, the bricks would only come down to here. Right. And I'm washing, and they come and stand around and start having a conversation while oh. I'm oh, no, baby. splashing the water on myself. <laughs> <laughs> but I never could catch them bathing. Yeah, of course not. You know, they knew, they knew what to do. Mm -hmm. uh, two full buckets of water and a bar of soap. It took him a couple of seconds to figure out the drill. Pour the whole bucket over my body, soap and then rinse, or splash some water on myself and soap up. More water to rinse off the soap. He decides to splash soap and rinse. 
Oh my God, what a good feeling. The water was sun warm, tepid, and the evening air just barely filled with breezes with a giant caress. The water splashed over his body from the bucket, prolonged the caress. He told himself off and reached for his clothes. He's gone. He felt around for a frantic second, sarong, the Las Vegas towel around his waist, and opened the door of the bathhouse, peeking out shyly. Aunt Eugenia gestured to him, come. Kofi felt a little self-conscious walking out of the shower with just a towel on. Aunt Eugenia gestured again. There, flip-flops. He snuggled his toes into the made in China flip-flops and tried to stroll across the distance, separating them without feeling self-conscious after being out in public with only a towel draper on his waist. <laughs> Shy boy. <laughs> Shy boy. I've soaked your clothes, all sweaty, salty. They will be washed. You have more clothes? Uh, yes, ma'am. You say, mom. What, what means mom? She stood in front of him, her fists on her, an on her ample hips, asking a very reasonable question. What was it the policeman said? Aunt Eugenia is a crusty old sort, but she makes very good banku and okra stew. Mom? What the hell does mom mean? <laughs> Obviously, it's a contraction of something. Maybe an American adaption is a French mamzelle. Maybe that's it. But mom is something that I've always heard used when folks were addressing older people. Mom, let me say this. I don't really know what mom means, other than as a way to address someone you want to show respect for. The old lady clapped her hands three times and laughed out loud. <laughs> You are your father's son. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess that's good. <laughs> now tell me this. Uh, hmm. You are your father's son. Now tell me this, Mom. What does this uh -huh mean? He thought he thought he was going to have to pick the old lady up off of the ground. <laughs> that was how hard her last convulsion took her. <laughs> Finally, she gained control of herself and told him why she was convulsed with laughter. Go <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> my son. <laughs> you must be very careful about how you say, uh -huh. it is very funny. Okay. What I say may be very funny, but what does it mean? You didn't answer that. He was beginning to do a, a positive grip on the old lady's grasp of things. If you couldn't track with her, she would simply write you off as a poop butt. Mm -hmm. Kofi was beginning to feel right at home. She stared at him and smiled. A lustrous, full teeth smile, no white sugar-coated cavities doing anywhere. I'm making a ground nut stew and fish for you, Mom. Mom. <laughs> to him. <laughs> Kofi smiled at the old lady's back as she went to stir the ground Fair. As she went to stir the ground nut pot. Mom. <laughs> yes, sir, madam. <laughs> yes, sir, madam. Maybe like Master Tik Ting Long used to say, it is all one. It is all one, yes. Awakening up by a rooster crowing in a cry at the green leaf, it would be a hotel maid singing, here it's a rooster crowing. But not just one rooster crowing, there were several roosters answering, hey guys, you don't have to challenge, you're going to be the sunrise guy. He yawned and stared up into the thatched roof. I have to ask what kind of snakes they have here. <laughs> he sat up on the side of the hard mud packed bed stand, bed stand covered by a thick futon. Hard, you do good to sleep on. Damn, that stew was good last night. <laughs> He'd eaten two full bowls of the groundnut stew 
while Aunt Eugenia simply sat and watched. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's rough. <laughs> Give me a funny feeling to help people sit and watch you eat yes. mm -hmm. something that they cook. Mm -hmm. And is he still in his towel? Okay, <laughs> moving right along. <laughs> uh, aren't you having some of this, uh, Auntie? I had my chop at one o'clock. I eat one time a day only. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No wonder you still that 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 coarse girl figure. He dug down to his backpack for a t-shirt and short khaki pants. Now let me get out of here and see what's happening in Cheeto. Aunt Eugenia, in concert with the other women in the neighborhood, was twig sweeping the area in front of a hut. Good morning, Auntie. Good morning, my son. There's water for your mouth. Oh, she yes. <laughs> she smiled briefly, barely glanced at him as she continued sweeping. A toothbrush chewing stick firmly clenched in the corner of her mouth. Kojo looked around. People in old Chito go bathing in their bath houses, sweeping, mm -hmm. eating breakfast, tending small garden plots, doing the things they did every day, maybe for centuries. On the way to the bathhouse, he took note of his clothes. His shirt and pants had been washed and hung out to dry. She washed my clothes by hand. I have to thank her for that. Maybe I should dash her. No, I don't think so. She's the type who would be insulted if I offered her a dash, a tip. Mm -hmm. The bath water was slightly cooler in the morning, very refreshing. He tarled off and was relieved to find his t-shirt and cactus still in place. Aunt Eugenia sat next to her cold pot, stirring something around in her small pan. Come, uh, Kofi, I've made your breakfast. I thought I would wait and have food later in the afternoon. Sit, 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 sit. You must eat. You are young. You need food. I'm not old. I don't need so much food. He could see the logic of her reasoning. No sense trying to argue with her. She's right. He sat in his usual place in the shade of the that hut. She gave him a bowl with grits. Huh. No, this is Gary with uh, ground nut sauce. <laughs> it might be Gary here, but back home we call it grits. You like? I've always liked grits. Mm. Oh, this is good. Mm. <laughs> like cereal. Mm -hmm. After his Gary grits with ground nut sauce, he leaned back against the wall of the hut. I, live, I feel like I've been living in this place a long time. The rhythms of life are so simple here. Nobody rushes to do anything. No bus to catch to go anywhere. Here or there. Mm -hmm. He stared up at the clear blue sky. No pollution, not even a cloud. Mm -hmm. But it was getting hotter by the minute. Aunt Eugenia marched past him with a large basket of ripe tomatoes on her head. Kofi jumped up to help her. Here, Auntie, let me give you a hand with that. She stared at him. Foolish boy, how can you help me? Can you carry this on your head? No, I couldn't carry it on my head, but I could carry it on my shoulder. He knew from the moment he struggled to lift the basket from her head that he wouldn't be able to carry the basket full of tomatoes anywhere. <laughs> but, 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 he tried for a few yards before he struggled to lower the basket from his shoulder without dropping the load. <laughs> um, where are you going with these? Up to road to New Chito. I have two people who will pay all I buy, all I bring. Mysteriously, the neighbor across the road was there to help Aunt Eugenia place the basket back on her head. Aye, aye. This is my sister. She is younger. 
Kofi smiled and bowed. The woman nodded and stuck out a warm, a work-worn hand to give him a very limp handshake. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's where he went last night to your sister's house. Aunt Eugenie was in stride with two steps. Kofi, I will go and come. If you need anything, call my sister. Her name is Patient. <laughs> now I'm on chapter 24. Oh. And I'm going to read chapter 24. Oh, okay. Dear Dad, I'm now. <laughs> I'm laughing at all this because this little village. <laughs> she told. <laughs> she told. Mm -hmm. Could be the, I think it would be the example for any place anybody ever gone mm -hmm. that was just totally unlike anything they'd ever known. Mm -hmm. Dear Dad, I'm now in this small place where you once stayed with Aunt Eugenia. I don't know how you, how old she is, but she has twice as much energy as I have. <laughs> She has just marched off down the road with a basket full of tomatoes on her head, which I could barely lift. Mm -hmm. She's a bit gruff, but very nice, very sweet. I like her. The taxi driver who drove me here is named Kwame, great-grandfather's name. The man is rich. He's a rich source of cultural info. He will be collecting me on Sunday morning. Today is Friday. I've been here overnight, and I feel as though I've been here for weeks. There's a great natural rhythm here. You wake when the roosters crow, you go to sleep, go to bed when it gets dark. It may sound like a cliche, but it's so quiet, I can literally hear myself think. I'm staying what is called an Old Chito, the village that you once stayed in. Old Chito looked like something from an issue of National Geographic with the thatched huts and old stuff. New Shito, a couple of football fields away, has cinder blocks and corrugated tin rooftops. I imagine it's quite hot inside of one of these dwellings. I haven't broached the subject of Asiafo, the girl who left the village, or any of that, upon the advice of Brother Kwame, the taxi driver. He suggested that I give it all a chance to come out as it comes out, not to force anything. I'm cool with that. It's close to midday noon, and the sun seems to be directly overhead. It's hot and humid. But the civility of the scene makes everything cool. I don't know when I'll be able to drop this letter into a mailbox. But I, but I thought I would write it anyway, just to let you know, to let you and Mom know that I'm having a great, interesting time. And then I thank you both for preparing me for this adventure. Love, Kofi. Hmm, nice. Aunt Eugenia returned in the late afternoon, about 3 o'clock. The tomato basket filled with store-wrapped goods. It's been a long day. Leave me half my bath. We will eat and then rest for a while. I didn't see any reason to dispute the schedule. She outlined in a brief sentence. She stared at the bathhouse, knowing that she was splashing. He stared at the bathhouse, knowing that she was splashing herself with a well-deserved shower. After she finished marching past him, she called out, Coffee, why they say I go? <laughs> Baby. <laughs> she didn't have to urge him. What could feel better than a refreshing shower at late midday? She changed his clothes while he was in the shower, replacing his shorts and t-shirt with the pants and shirt he had worn when he arrived. What did she want to iron these things? Stepping out of the shower feeling fresh and almost dapper, with his freshly ironed shirt and pants, he found the answer to his questions across the road. Sister Patience had ironed his clothes. Hmm. There, there it was, full-blown, that African 
cooperation syndrome. It would be great if more African Americans were into this kind of thing beyond Kwanzaa. Mm -hmm. Well said. Beyond Kwanzaa. They sat down in the shadow of the hut to eat a delicious meal of kinky and smoked fish that her sister brought from across the road on a large covered tray. Kofi, my I must warn you, that she thought the pepper sauce is hot. The she thought was very warm, but it wasn't hot. Aunt Eugenia took note. Yeah, the she thought does not call you a problem. Auntie, I grew up on habaneras and scotch bonnets because that's what my dad likes. Ah. Work, food, eat, sleep. He, he, he lay on the hard mud packed bed thinking a jumbled number of things. How do I go about asking this woman the questions I want to ask her? Better put this mosquito net up before I go to this dreamland. He woke up to the sounds of drums in the, in the distance. Wonder what that's about. He was surprised to see several people from nearby huts assembled in Aunt Eugenia's backyard. Kofi, come. Aunt Eugenia was obviously refreshed from her bath, her chop, and her nap. She and her neighbors were seated around an old-fashioned star fire. She beckoned him to the medium-sized hand-carved stool at her right side. They had wooden cups. They were drinking. Go feed. I have something you can take. She pulled a fifth of Grant Scotch from the basket at her side. She stared at the bay label. He stared at the label for a second. Whoa! This is the serious time. <laughs> Hmm. <clears throat> uh, what are y'all drinking? It seemed that all eight heads in the circle swiveled in his direction. Up at this she. Mm -hmm. She answered and pulled a bottle of white liquor out of her basket. I'll have some of that. <laughs> she she seemed to be a bit contrite as she poured him a large drink in a small wooden cup. This is Apteshi. It is the, the poor man's drink, but we like it. He dribbled a few drops on the ground before taking a sip, which earned him approving glances. Uh -huh. Aunt Eugenia's son knows how to behave proper. Mm. Apteshi. It tastes freshly made moonshine in the south a couple of times. The Apteshi had that kind of kick, plus the aftertaste of a good gin. He smacked his lips with approval. The man to Auntie's left made a comment at Navy. My neighbor says, you are a real bruni. Most, most do not like our petition. Mm. Fee shook his head, smiled at the man, and took a more generous sip of his drink. <laughs> Don't be silly. <laughs> Can't get away from this old bruni thing. No Youth. <laughs> Youth. <laughs> Yeah, drunk or Bruni, you keep <laughs> drinking that appetite. <laughs> drunk, drunk or sober, I'm still uh, <laughs> no Bruni. Mm -hmm. Two hours later, with uh, Indonesian mos mosquito foil wafing up mosquito protection coils of smoke, some, for some reason, in Ghana, some West, maybe else, but they sell little coils of perfume. Yeah, yeah you can get it even here. Mos mosquito coil. Mm -hmm. Kofi, Aunt Eugenia, her sister, and the man who had made the comment about him stared into the fire, pleasantly drawn. Auntie, what is the drumming all about? It is a funeral. A big, big man has died. They are playing for his funeral. That was the time he could feel it. I want, uh, Auntie, Auntie, I want to ask you a few questions. Eh. About a man in Asiapo. Silence. No one has to tell him that he struck a chord. You right on the number. 
Sobering moment. <laughs> Sobering moment. Oh, another bottle of Apotheci suddenly appeared. It was passed around, libations and prayers offered. What do you want to know of this wicked man? Well, as I understand, he was killed, right? He, he felt it would be better to lay a little groundwork before jumping right into it. The three people sitting around the small fire with him nodded their heads in attendance. Yes, he was struck down here, over there. Aunt Eugenia pointed in the direction of Uchito when all of that land was forest land. So, uh, I'm just curious. My father told me many times that he had spoken with Asiafo. Uh, he told me that this man possessed strong powers, maybe magic. They sipped from their cups of apetite. Were silent for a few moments. The drumming from New Chito had gone from staccato to slow, deep bass notes. Mm. I told Kojo, your father, to stay away from that wicked man, but he he disobeyed me. I felt that he is very lucky that something very bad did not happen to him. Our Eugenia's sister, patience and the man sharing the appetition with him, with them, agreed. Uh -huh. He was very wicked. That this Asafio could turn himself into a serpent. Kojo's ears perked up the word serpent. What, what, what kind of serpent? Uh, what kind of snake? The man's eyes rolled around a couple of times before he answered. A big snake, a big, big snake. <laughs> and they all laughed and sipped more of the dish. Mm -hmm. Cause he was beginning to feel a bit loose-headed, <coughs> which is one way to put it. <laughs> he felt it wouldn't be long before he would feel the need to either go to bed or vomit. <laughs> but he was also determined to get the information he needed. Auntie, your, your, your niece wrote my father a letter years ago telling him that Asiafo had a girlfriend from the village. In the letter, she says that after Asiafo was killed, this girl was banished from the village. Aunt Eugenia's sister spoke, slurring her words slightly. She was not banished. She ran away from Chito because she was pregnant with Asiafo's baby. Aunt Eugenia ended the conversation by pouring the dregs of her drink into the dying coals of the fire. The fire flared up briefly and then died. Wow. It is late now. Time for us to go to sleep. Aunt Eugenia announced and strode across the road to her sister's hut. Kofi struggled to his feet, shook hands with sister Patience and the man, her husband, boyfriend, and staggered into the hut. What, what kind of snake I feel awful turned himself into? The rooster's, the rooster's crowing woke him up. He opened his eyes slowly and, and gently placed his hand between his head. God, oh, <laughs> no hangover. <laughs> he, he felt certain he would wake up with a hangover. Good, no hangover. Okay. Aunt Eugenia sat on the stool in the shade, peeling and slicing vegetables. He recognized onions and okra. Good morning, Kofi. Good morning, Auntie. The fleeting smiles as they exchanged were self-explanatory. We tied one on last night. 
Yeah, you just, you know, we was drinking last night. I, I saw you. <laughs> Held you on for a boy. <laughs> Seeing a different Aunt Eugenia now. Oh. He, 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 he took his shower, splashed bath, and rolled strolled back to the cool bench by the side of the hut. Aunt Eugenia placed a large bowl in his hand. Full, full, light tea, light soup, good for you. It was good, but by the time he finished eating with his right hand, mm -hmm. pinching off a small water, the cassava plantain fufu, stirring a around in the goat flavored soup and putting it in his mouth, he had dribbled quite a bit of it down in front of his shirt. Mm -hmm. Kofi, give me your shirt, there's soup on the front. There's also soup. Inside of me. <laughs> Can't wash that, dummy. Yeah, she gave it. She, she's observant. He stripped off his shirt and went inside the hut to dig inside of his backpack for another t shirt. Aunt Eugenia had placed his shirt in a pile of her other clothes to be washed. Kofi, she decided to come, 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 sit, sit, sit. He sat on the beach near her, on the bench near her, checking out the expression on her dark brown face. She looked off into the distance in the direction of New Chito for a few moments before speaking. Kofi, my son, we do not like to speak of unhealthy things before we go to sleep. It can arouse bad spirits in our dreams. Are you getting me? Uh Yes, ma'am. I understand. She turned to face him and removed her chewing stick, toothbrush from the corner of her mouth. Yes, Kutu ran away from Shito because of the shame she felt and because she refused to take the herbs that her mother, her father wanted her to take to stop her pregnancy. Mm. That was the name given her after she left in your language, it means pot. So, why would they call her pot? Aunt Eugenia <clears throat> took a chewing stick and pantomime, stirring something around in the palm of her hand, uh, stirring something about a pot. Go to. Go to. I get it. This happened many years ago when women and girls did not have anything to do with men before they were married. Now it is different. So where did Kutu go? No one knew where she was for a long time. But then one day, a woman from our village told us that she had seen Kutu in the marketplace in Osu. That's where I'm living right now, at the Greenleaf uh, Hotel in Osu. <laughs> She was seen in the marketplace with a baby on the back. I see a full baby. Maybe, maybe that one or some other man, who knows? And no one has seen her since that time. Oh, yes. Someone will see her here, now, here, here, there. You must remember in Ghana here, it is not easy to disappear or to keep a secret, especially in Osu. There's a saying. Reveal yourself in Kumasi today, and they will know about you and Kosu tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whew. Kojo reasoned that Aunt Eugenie was saying that Kutu was living in a section of Accra called Osu, but indirectly. So, Auntie, let's say I wanted to find this person in Osu. Who would I be like to know where she is? I'm a village woman. I don't know the city. Perhaps my niece will know. Grace, can you give me a number for her? You say, can you give her, can you give me her address? Her address. Yeah, she lives in Kanda. She's not far from Osu on King Road. I know it. My driver showed it to me when I first arrived. That was uh, that is all I would say about this. What now? Mm-hmm.
I must pull weeds from my garden before it rains. Huh? Rains? Where? Kofi stared up at the bright blue sky. There, over there, it is there, it's coming. <laughs> Silly boy. <laughs> City boy. <laughs> you know nothing. You see, but you do not see. <laughs> <laughs> that saying in tree. He is a, a man with big eyes in a strange place. He does not know what he sees. That's the so true. That's you, absolutely right. Mm -hmm. Dear Dad, Mom, it's raining here in Chito. It's like somebody had opened up a faucet. The rain is coming down like that. Audrey Virginia pointed at a distant cloud this morning, which I couldn't even see, and predicted rain. Mm -hmm. Three, four hours later, the wet stuff happened. The thunder and lightning that goes with this downpours in the lake is enough to make you believe that there is a Shango, <laughs> if you didn't already believe. <laughs> I'm quite dry, however, my little that tut, auntie's house. Mm -hmm. Reading, writing, say eating. Auntie is across the road at her sister's house, but she's been back and forth about four times today to bring me my chop to make sure that I hadn't gone crazy stir crazy, and finally to bring me an old-fashioned cold oil lantern. Hmm. I think I have gotten the info I need to find this girl who had our sample baby. Auntie explained what the moral climate was like back then and offered a reasonable explanation of why the girl, she was named Kutu, because she had been stirred around a lot inside. Hmm was away from here. I have been in Shito since Thursday night. Today is Saturday, and my taxi driver, Luku Willi Kwame, is scheduled to collect me tomorrow morning. Aunt Eugenia has played with my head a little bit by telling me, sometimes, like now, it will rain for one day or for one week. Mm, mm, mm. The roads become very muddy and many children are conceived. <laughs> <laughs> All right, something to do. Well, I don't have to worry about it, many children being conceived, <laughs> but I'm crossing my fingers and praying that the road, road won't be too muddy for Brother Duquan to come get me. This is the second letter I've written, but I haven't mailed it. I'll go to the post office as soon as I get back to Accra. Love, Kofi. Kofi. <sighs> Very cool. I'm trying to take us mm -hmm. as African Americans, and mm -hmm. I'm explicit mm -hmm. about this. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to take us what it would feel like to go to a small village in Ghana. Lovely. Especially. Mm -hmm. A younger dude who has some mm -hmm. ulterior motives and mm -hmm. runs into people, you know, who are so devoid of uh, extraneous, what do you call it, uh, superfluous uh, uh, agendas. But he's been raised well, you can tell. He, they come directly at right. you. Right, yeah, I mean, he, but he's been raised well. He's been raised well. Yes, yeah. okay, so even cultural nuances. You, Zola, you yeah. saw on it, it ain't even funny because mm -hmm. a whole lot of people, and mm -hmm. I've made that point early on, mm -hmm. his, his people, I did that, mm -hmm. I did that. Mm -hmm. I laid in the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Don't go there being ignorant. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I, I can't think of how many conversations I had with African Americans, they're not African Americans, you know, the ugly African Americans, mm -hmm. but people who were so un, unprepared to deal with the experience of, mm -hmm. you know, coming to grips with their ancestors. Yes. You know, the, the lady who told me that we went to this little village, <laughs> and she said, why are you here? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I, I just came to find out where my ancestors came from. And she said she agreed. She, that is a good thing. Mm -hmm. but, but why are you here? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Well, you've been here a couple of days, you found this is where they came from now. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to, you know, fumble around for it. The money is over there. Mm -hmm. We right. have nothing. Mm -hmm. But now they do. Uh, <laughs> you know, that was just the mentality. <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> if, if there's mm -hmm. no other point, and I'm not going to stop mm -hmm. preaching at this point in time, mm -hmm. chapter 24. But uh, if you are an African American, and and you, I've, I've written about it in, in a couple of publications. If you're an African American, you go to Ghana or Nigeria or some one of the African West Coast countries, uh, Angola, mm -hmm. uh, Liberia, even. Mm -hmm. You find that you'd be terribly disappointed to find out that the people don't think of you as being an African. Mm -hmm. You might be a relative, but if you don't know where your your great 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 grandfather's village was, uh, Henry Louis Gates might be helping us. Mm -hmm. We saw the program recently where uh, he was uh, talking with Queen Latifah mm -hmm. about her about her ancestors. The thing that fell short to me is that when they get to the Ancestry program, they never go past slavery. They never well, go past the thing slavery. is, that I don't think they have it in their database. You know, some you some of them no, don't. No, no. You can do it, you can get a swab and stick it in your cheek, and they can tell you which African tribe you came from. Some databases can. Oh, okay. Some can't. Okay. Uh, so I think that's the okay, problem. So you have to find hey, out. Don't, don't you, let's, let's not stop at 1619. Right. Yeah, well, I start in 1619. Take me, take mm -hmm. me back to the God. Take me back to the Adam, uh, Adam May. Take me back to tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow. Take, take you back to tomorrow. And <laughs> your book. My, my director said. <laughs> yes, moving right on. You see all the blood coming out of my head. Now, now, now. <laughs> <laughs> the Snake Doctor can be purchased on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, your local bookstore. Just go in and say, I want The Snake Doctor by Odie Hawkins. And that is The Snake Doctor. All right. And I'm proud of the book. Too. Yes, indeed. All right. And so I'm glad you're proud of the book. We are too. <laughs> and you're also on the uh, author's page in Amazon. Yes, there you are behind. There you go. Yes, indeed. There you are again. Is this the picture that you took? I took that picture too. Yes, indeed. The picture of you. All right. Did you take this one too? I took the one. Did <laughs> you take right. the cover photo? Yes, I took the cover photo. Okay. <laughs> and so your website is www.odiehawkins.com. We look forward to the next reading. Tomorrow Hopefully tomorrow time, evening. Definitely. Okay. Thank you very much, Odie Hawkins. I appreciate your time, your reading, and all that lifting, separating heaven and earth. <laughs>